An unusual hurricane season this year, to say the least. This is only the second time that three Category 5 storms formed in one season. We had Aaron, Umberto, and, of course, the real monster, the beast. It was Melissa. In fact, one of those hurricane hunters captured a 252-mile-per-hour wind reading right there in Melissa. After extensive review, the NHC confirms that Melissa carried the strongest wind gust ever recorded. Today, Colorado State University released their forecast verification, and it's always interesting. We're not even done with the season yet, but it's kind of dead. Joining us now to discuss it is Dr. Phil Klotzbach, the senior research scientist of the Department of the Atmospheric Sciences at Colorado State University. Doctor, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And uh, we just you released your verification today. Yes, that's correct. And yeah, well, you were just talking about all that snow or lack of snow in Colorado. And I'm happy to talk about that as well. It's, um, <laughs> we're going to get rain here today, which is really unusual this late. It's just too warm for snow. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but hopefully someday soon we'll get some snow here. I'm hoping so. So hey, let's talk about the verification. I thought it was pretty good this year. We knew it was going to be above average season. That's what you forecasted. And lo and behold, it was. Yeah, so, you know, it was an interesting year in that, as, as you noted, we had three Category 5 hurricanes, which is the second most on record, trailing only 2005. But we only had five overall hurricanes, which is a little bit below the long-term average of seven. Um, so it was a year where we didn't necessarily have a ton of storms. So the quantity was fairly low, but the quality or the strength of the storms was quite high. And so the way that NOAA verifies hurricane seasons is based on accumulated cyclone energy, which is a geeky metric that accounts for storm intensity and duration. And so basically when you have strong storms, like you mentioned with Umberto, Aaron and certainly Melissa, they generate a lot of ACE. So we met the threshold of an above normal season, just played out in kind of an unusual way with, you know, not necessarily a ton of hurricanes, but the hurricanes that formed uh, were quite strong. And you guys pegged it. I always love watching your uh, forecast and how it transfers out there. I mean, this is, that is pretty good right there. I mean, you, you're talking 16 name storms, got the 13, man. How close can you get? That is a, a really good shot. Was there anything, Doctor, though, that surprised you about the season? I know we had the Category 5s, but anything else out there? Yeah, I mean, I think really the way the season played out, so a little bit similar to what we had last year, uh, we went, had a lot, had some pronounced storm activity early. This year was most notably Hurricane Aaron, which was a Category 5. Then we went through the climatological or average peak of the season from late August through mid-September with no storms. Uh, it was the quietest uh, mid-season period since 1992. And then we ended up with a very, very busy end of the season, most notably uh, for Hurricane Melissa. Um, which obviously reached Category 5 strength. So again, kind of an unusual season in how it played out. Uh, fortunately for the United States, a relatively benign season. It was the first season without a landfalling hurricane hitting the United States uh, since back in 2015. Yeah, and it was uh, Chantal where it was just a tropical storm. So yeah, we, we totally lucked out about that. There's really no question about it. And I'm looking at the maps going on right here. We still have some relatively warm waters that are out there across areas like uh, the Caribbean. Do you see anything in the near future that could maybe kick something up before the end of hurricane season? Um, that seems quite unlikely at this point. The National Hurricane Center and their latest tropical weather outlook uh, didn't have anything for the next week. Mm -hmm. um, you know, then it's getting it's, it's getting really, really late in the season. To, to quote uh, the, the late great Yankee catcher Yogi Berra, it's yeah. getting late early uh, for the 2025 hurricane season. Yeah, he also said it ain't over till it's over. So we'll see. That's right. Yes, that, that is true. And, you know, we, we occasionally will get storms uh, not during the actual official hurricane season. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a while, but you can get storms in December. Not saying we're going to see one this year, but just because the season officially ends November 30th doesn't guarantee that you can't get something uh, during the off season. Yeah, that's a, that's a terrific point. And you mentioned the fact it was it was dead during the, the average peak of the season, which is, you know, early September, mid-September. It was kind of like that last year as well. Do you think this is a trend going in, or is this just a couple of blips? Yeah, that, that's hard to say, and it's something we're certainly uh, wrestling with at CSU. You know, obviously, two years doesn't necessarily a trend make since 2023. Uh, we had an extremely pronounced uh, climatological peak of the season. I think a couple of the reasons why 2024 was quiet versus 2025 were somewhat different. Uh, but certainly the last couple of years, uh, we have had some stability issues during the peak of the season where the atmosphere has been fairly stable. Uh, this year, we also had a pronounced upper level low pressure, so low pressure high up in the atmosphere, about 20 to 30,000 feet, that really ramped up the vertical wind shear, that change in wind speed and direction with height in the atmosphere, right at the peak of the season, to really kind of throttle anything that was trying to develop uh, during that point. Once that upper level low pressure uh, weakened and the shear dropped, and then we ended up with a you know pretty busy end of the season. Obviously, for the U.S., the most 
kind of the closest call was um, what became Hurricane Imelda. Early on, it looked like that might go up into the Carolinas, be maybe a really pronounced rainmaker there. Fortunately, Umberto is to Imelda's east and basically weakened the high pressure ridge um, and allowed a trough to come in and basically pull the storm out to sea. So, you know, for the U.S. this year, again, very lucky. Um, and that even though we had some really pronounced strong hurricanes in the Western Atlantic, no real significant impacts. Yeah, it was. We got lucky. We really did for the United States. Uh, Jamaica, obviously, did not. They took the full brunt. But, uh, Doctor, it's great to talk to you. And again, we'd love to talk to you about snow sometime coming up, but I just don't see it. It's just too warm. Sounds good. Yes. Snow for the high peaks today here, but uh, unfortunately, I think no snow probably below about 7,000 feet. So I think Denver's uh, snowless streak is going to go on for at least a few more days. What are you guys at, 216 or something, 232? So you're, you're over 200 days without seeing any kind of snow. Yeah, too, too, many, too many days with no snow, but it, 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 it'll come. Looks like some, some more pronounced troughiness coming here later this month. Yeah, so maybe no we question. can uh, break out of the streak before the end of, before the end of, uh, before the official end of hurricane season. I hope it happens for you, sir. I really do. Senior research scientist, Dr. Phil Clark. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. We'll talk